And now on to Frédéric Ram. Yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about mechanical edits or automated edits uh, in OpenStreetMap and mostly the talk is why you shouldn't do them or what the problems with them are, but I will also tell you how to do them if you really must do them. Uh, I might also be talking a little bit about imports, time permitting, but the main topic is really automatic and mechanical edits. What is an automatic or mechanical edit? Now, most people think when I say um, automatic edit, um, so we, 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 have this, we, we have this system with our central database and it's accessed through an API and normally you have an editor like JOSM or the ID editor and then you have a human being sitting in front of the editor and doing something with that and people tend to think that this is the normal editing and automated editing is if you don't have a normal editor but you have a bot, a robot, a script, a program that changes something uh, in the API. And that's why we have started using the term mechanical edits instead of automated edits because what we want to say is you can do such a mechanical edit even with uh, the editor software even as a human being. What I mean by this is anyone who's ever, in, in my time at university, I, I think I copied maybe 20, 30 books at a Xerox machine, right? Like this guy in the photo. And it can be a very, very uh, mind-numbing thing to do to copy a 500-page book and you take the book, turn the page, put it on again, put, push the button, take the book, turn the page, put it on again. This is a task that is being done by a human being and not by a robot, but it's still kind of mechanical and without thinking. And that's basically what we mean when we say mechanical edits. Um, any edit in OpenStreetMap that you make without looking at the individual thing that you edit is what we call a mechanical edit. Um, I'll give you some examples. Um, later on. There's, uh, there's an automated code of conduct, uh, automated edit code of conduct in, open, uh, in the OpenStreetMap wiki that explains uh, what you should be doing if you plan to make such an edit. The most important thing is discuss your plans beforehand because um, mostly when people attempt automated edits some, or mechanical edits, something goes wrong and they, and they have unintended consequences. Discussing your plans beforehand will at least mitigate those unintended consequences because you'll have another couple pairs of eyes that look at what you're planning to do and that might tell you, hey, are you really sure this is a good idea? So here's an example. This is a JOSM screenshot and let's imagine that uh, you open your JOSM editor and you find a rectangle here uh, and, you do, and you see there's lots of buildings here but this is not colored the same as the other buildings. Why? Because it has a tag that's called building equals yes and building is spelled with a capital B. Now tagging is case sensitive in OpenStreetMap so the editor or the renderer will not recognize this rectangle as a building. So assume that you see this and then you check, you cross-check on the area imagery and you say, oh, there's really a building there. Um, I'm going to change that to our lowercase b and then the thing appears as a proper building in OpenStreetMap and all is fine. And the next day you think, hey, I've run a tag info query and I found out that there are 55 other objects in OpenStreetMap tagged with capital B building equals yes. Why not change them all to lowercase b? Certainly it's a good idea. I mean, the, with a capital B, it's useless, it's wrong, it doesn't work. So let me change them all and let me help OpenStreetMap. Um, if you do that without looking at the individual things, you might create all sorts of problems. For example, imagine someone has drawn a building in that, in that place uh, has tagged it with a capital B accidentally, uh, noticed that there was something wrong because it didn't appear on the map. Later on, he drew the same building again, this time with a lowercase b, which is the thing that you see 
beneath it. Now, if you make your automated edit without looking at that location, you will basically just create a second building that is located on top of the first one, which is silly. If you had been looking at the place, of course, you would have discovered, oh, there are two buildings, I'll just delete one. Or uh, there could be something in the middle of a street that is tagged with building equals yes and a capital B. And if you just change everything without looking at the things, then you suddenly have created a building in the middle of a road. I mean, it was wrong before, but it wasn't, at least it wasn't a wrong building bang in the middle of a road. It was just a meaningless rectangle, and you have changed that into a proper building. Or something that can also happen is uh, someone accidentally tags all the nodes, all the, all the edges of the rectangle, the building equals yes tag, and uh, uses a capital B, and then you change all these to lowercase b, but that doesn't make it any better. It was wrong before, and it's still wrong, still wrong after your change, so uh, you haven't actually helped with your edit. Why do people perform mechanical edit, edits? What, what motivates them? Um, it's mostly uh, gardening. Uh, the wanting to have a nice, clear landscape in OpenStreetMap without any of the uh, automated uh, debugging tools showing any errors. People want, people want to help. People want to do the right thing. They, they want to improve the data, but uh, unlike a real gardener who actually takes his scissors and cuts off individual leaves of uh, dead leaves of a plant or something, uh, some people basically just overdo it by trying to fix something planet-wide. There's also the uh, another kind of motivation that sometimes uh, drives people to make mechanical edits. I mean, we, many of us come from a technical background and many of us have been through, ha have had this experience where because we knew computers, because we could write scripts, we could help other people achieve something uh, that they would otherwise have taken days to fix, right? Someone is basically, I don't know, someone does some, some stupid mechanical task uh, because he doesn't know how to, fi how to automate it and we, because we are computer people, we say, hey, I can simply write a script and the other person goes, oh my God, you've helped me so much, thank you, you've saved me days of my life. And this feeling is something that some people bring to OSM and they, they see something like the building equals yes and they say, I don't understand why people haven't fixed this yet, let me quickly hack up a script and everyone will be thankful. Um, then they don't understand the, the uh, potential problems and implications and then the result is, but I only wanted to help. Yeah, well, thank you, but uh, as I said in my subtitle, the, the road to hell is, uh, is uh, full of good intentions. So um, it's um, it paved with good intentions. It's sometimes uh, wanting, wanting the good thing and doing the good thing is not the same. If you do uh, these kinds of worldwide mechanical edits, like let me change all the build, capital B buildings, then among other things, the list of your change sets, if viewed in the API, will look like this, and you will have like tons of really large bounding boxes. No one will uh, be able to easily see wh what you've been doing and where. Um, another problem is that, that you give a false impression of an up-to-date map. Um, for example, in the US, we have uh, many areas that have been imported uh, from the Tiger data source. And other people make maps of so-called Tiger deserts, where they analyze the map of the United States and they color it according to when things have last been changed, when, when, has there, when have there been edits. And then if it's, if it's kind of a red area, that means, okay, this, this area largely hasn't changed since the Tiger import. So people know, okay, this really needs some mapper love and we need to do some updates here. Now, if someone runs Amok with all kinds of automated edits, fixing stuff, fixing typos, changing uh, letters, and so on and so on, um, they will create the impression 
that this area is full of activity, right? It will, also, it will look green on the map, like, oh, there's lots going on. Certainly, the map in that area must have a high quality because there are lots of edits. And if these edits are not really a human being looking at the aerial image and fixing things, but someone running a bot, then it's just uh, a false impression. I caught some flack on the Talk US list recently when uh, someone said, I don't know what, uh, this branch of this shop is, or I, I don't know exactly what it was, some branch of some, uh, some chain, or some chain was changing its name or something, and someone suge suggested, hey, let's simply change everything that has name equals old name of the retail chain to name equals new name of the chain. It can't hurt, really. It makes the map better, doesn't it? And I said, well, by doing that, you actually hide uh, the fact that some areas might actually be in dire need of some actual mapper attention. If, if you, that's the, the best user interface that you can have for outdated maps. If you go to a shop and you buy a paper map and the paper map says, uh, lists some retail chain and has a name for the retail chain that you know has changed two years ago, you immediately know, okay, this map is at least two years old. And I think it's good if the same thing applies to OSM. If there's an area where the retail store has, still has the name of two years ago, then I know, okay, this area is a bit dated, there's probably not too much people locally who fix it, and I can't rely on this map as much as I could rely on a map that has the, the correct name for the retail branch. So I think it's better if such changes are made by human beings who will then also do all kinds of other fixes and not just change the name of the retail chain. Another problem with such mechanical edits is uh, that, that you will often edit things in areas where you don't know the culture or the language. So you might introduce an error, I mean, not, maybe not with my building example, but with other things where someone basically, someone uh, goes and changes all land use equals wood to natural equals wood because he's read on the wiki that land use equals wood doesn't exist, so it must be an error, so I change it. But maybe someone locally has actually used that tag because they wanted to express something special. And maybe if you do that, you suddenly get a message in, uh, I don't know, in, in Mandarin or something from someone who wants to know why you made a change in their country and then you can't even read it or reply. So um, it's generally, I mean, it's not ideal if you from far away run mechanical edits in areas that you don't know. And I have a, a, a very small, uh, simple example that, that um, Ethan provided to me. Um, it's not, this, is a, this is in uh, New Mexico in the US, and it's a drive-in cinema. And it was mapped a bit like this, so there's, there's an access road here, and it goes in here and is mapped as a one-way road, right? Um, one-way street. And um, now someone ran an analysis software that, that was looking for bad one-ways, one-way roads that were leading somewhere where you could never get back because it was only one-way roads leading to that place. And that person found this and said, okay, obviously this must be wrong. I'll just remove the one-way tag here because, you know. Now, if the person who edited that had known how uh, drive-in cinemas are often laid out, they might have uh, had a hunch that when you try to drive that road in the other direction, you will hit something like this. Um, so, yes, it, it was indeed a kind of mapping error because uh, the roads that lead out of the cinema hadn't been mapped. But that doesn't mean that you can just remove the one-way flag from this road. So, the the proper thing to do is obviously just f wait for a local person to map the cinema in the right way and map all the roads and then you know how it works and you know how it should be. So this, is, this was a completely, completely manual edit on the face of it. Someone was using the JOSM editor or whatever editor and removed the one-way one -way marker. It wasn't someone doing that for the whole world, but it was a mechanical edit in terms of, you know, what I said initially, someone just removed the thing without 
thinking like the guy at the copying machine, you know, that's, oh, one-way error, or fix it, other one-way error, other place in the world, fix it, fix it, fix it, without looking at the individual case. So the mechanical edits will, will often turn uh, something that's maybe not perfect, like uh, an, an, a road missing in this cinema, or like, uh, like uh, the building errors that I showed you before, something that's uh, not, not perfect. Um, and, but, but that, no, sorry, I'm kind of misspeaking here. So this is about something else. The, the, the cinema case is something where you fix something just for your tool, and your one-way problem tool will make the problem go away or we will not show the problem anymore afterwards, but you haven't actually improved the data. What I want to say with this slide is something slightly different and is another topic that we often encounter at Data Working Group. This happens when someone imports bad data or, or for example, we have a CEO spammer uh, who adds lots of locations to uh, places in OpenStreetMap that don't really make sense. For example, we recently had someone add a shop in the middle of a bang, bang in the middle of a parking lot. And then there was a tag that said the keyword, that, that particular SEO spammer um, always adds a keyword tag to his stuff. And the keyword says something like, well, this is a travel agent or something. And then someone else came along uh, and was alerted to that keyword tag because it's unusual and changed that into um, um, shop equals travel agent or something like that and removed the keyword. So making it look all right from the tagging perspective, but still not fixing the fact that there was a node in the middle of a parking lot. So that, that, that's what I wanted to say with this slide. Sometimes there's data that's evidently bad because it has tags that don't work or something. Um, and you can easily find them. And then someone comes along and runs some kind of mechanical or semi-mechanical edit and fixes some things. And that just makes the bad data less obvious, but it's still there. If people had looked at the individual situation with aerial imagery or even better with local knowledge, these things wouldn't have happened. Now, what can you do instead? What's the right way if you, for example, find that there are lots of things in OSM tagged as building equals yes with a capital B and you want to get rid of them? What can you do? Um, first, analyze the issue. Find out how did this happen? Because it could be that someone just typed in the key building equals yes. But you should really try and find out, is it always the same person that does this? Uh, is it maybe always the same editor, always the same software that creates these problems? Is there maybe a bug in the software that, that should be fixed? Um, analyze the thing, find out what happens. Uh, communicate, so either bring it up on a mailing list or talk to the person whom you see or the persons whom you see making these mistakes and say, hey, how did this happen? Uh, what did you do here? Um, can this be fixed? Can this be avoided in the future? Um, then if you find that lots of things should be changed before thinking about an automated edit, maybe it's better to run this through a kind of a weekly challenge where you say, hey, local community, in this week uh, or this quarter or this month or something, let's fix all the branches of this and that supermarket chain. And by the way, let's also do something in the surroundings, so improve the area. Or maybe you could run it as a map roulette task um, where people will also, where people will at least look at aerial imagery and f fix things properly instead of just uh, going over it with an automated lawnmower. Then if you find that all these things, these things don't work, then yes, there are rules for mechanical edits. You can do mechanical edits. Uh, there are guidelines that you should be following. Most importantly, discuss the thing on the mailing lists before and make sure that you don't break more things than you repair. To sum up this whole topic, the strength of OSM is edits by human beings who have an intimate knowledge of the area they're editing in and the subject they're editing. If you have someone from 5,000 miles away, they will usually not do 
an as good job as at editing something than someone who knows the area, someone who lives there or has at least visited there, or, and I'm making that concession, or someone who at least uh, looks at recent aerial imagery and not just uh, fixes something to, to fix it or to get rid of a typo. So this is, this is what we want to encourage in OSM, and there is a place for mechanical edits, but that place is limited, and it's much better to involve human beings to fix things, even if that sounds a bit tedious sometimes. And I will say a few words about imports, but really quickly, because imports, data imports, share some of the problems that mechanical edits have, um, mainly importing stuff where, without looking at the area that you're importing into, for example, here, this is in California, some uh, military areas uh, and, and some, um, some, some wetland that has been imported, and it doesn't coincide with the coastline really, but it should, so it's some, something is wrong here, and I don't know what is wrong, and the person who ran the import should have kind of uh, made sure that stuff matches up by, by looking at it. Or this is, this is Finland where, uh, well, forest has been imported, but it doesn't really stop there in reality. If, if people had done this manually, then, then it wouldn't look like this. It would look differently, like people maybe editing in areas they're interested in. This is an old screenshot, and it's a bit unfair of me because it has been fixed meanwhile. But that was an import in Indonesia where someone imported populated areas and just imported them all as little gray circles. This has meanwhile been fixed by real human beings looking at aerial image or even on the ground. Um, this, is, this is, again, in the US. Uh, uh, city boundaries and state boundaries that are somehow not really matching up and cross, crisscrossing the river. Something's wrong there. Uh, someone has imported this without actually looking at what was already there, maybe because he felt it was just too much work, but it doesn't really help a lot, and it would be nicer if such imports could be done by people who actually know the area and can fix these things properly. Um, this is from Aleppo in, in Syria, and it looks all right at first, but if you look at the little, little triangles, those are mountain peaks, or at least some kind of peaks, uh, you will see that they are all nicely arranged in a grid here, like it's all rectangles, or up here all in a line. This is, this is not how it is on the ground. This is because the data that was imported uh, was rounded uh, the coordinates were rounded to, I don't know how many decimals, but yeah, that's, if someone had actually known the area or at least verified what they were doing, the map wouldn't look like this, and it still does today. Imports are often badly executed uh, by people who just feel they don't have the time to do it properly or uh, don't have the means. There are good imports or imports that are helpful uh, but you should really only perform imports if you are local or at least if you are in touch with the local community that will then, after the import, work with it and help improve it with their local knowledge. Um, you, if, if you work with human beings through, say, a task manager or something where you say, okay, everyone pick an area that they know about and import data in that area. Um, if you can't do these things, if, if, if you feel that oh, well, the country is so large and there are so little people, uh, I'd rather import all this data because something is better than nothing. My suggestion would be better, better wait until uh, there is enough mappers in the place who can actually make sure that the import is done well. Thank you very much. That's what I had to say about automated edits and imports, and I hope I could encourage a couple of you to think twice when next time someone says, yeah, it's easy, I'll just change all this in one go worldwide with my editor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I found on my area was that uh, 
there were non-existent bridges because they weren't there. It was a road that had gone through and turned to what was one road into two cul-de-sacs. I ended up putting a note on each end of the cul-de-sac to say there is no bridge here because obviously some people were just sort of assuming this was silly and, and keep putting a bridge back in. You did say that there are some things which are automatically done. Do they check for the likes of notes or is there some other thing that we should do to try and encourage the, the non-building of bridges which aren't there? It's uh, very difficult to, to map the non-existence of things in OSM and um, uh, especially if, if you're in a situation where aerial imagery is wrong and people work on outdated aerial imagery like, uh, like the story that Alan Mustard was telling in his, in his opening talk where uh, someone else was working from old imagery and they were always putting the building back and he was always sort of removing it or changing it and so on. Um, I usually place a note there if, if that happens. And if, if, I, if I then notice that the other person doesn't read the note, I'll try to message them directly and say, hey, please be careful with that. Yeah, it, it's a, it, I have it as well where there is a flood barrier which looks exactly like a bridge. You know, if it wasn't for the fact I'd been there and seen it, I'd know you can't actually get across it. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> it sometimes helps to uh, tag these things as, for example, if there's something you see that on the aerial imagery that, that looks like a building, but you know it's maybe a lake or whatever. Uh, it really helps to tag that as a lake because then someone else will see, okay, well, there is something already uh, and, and this is less like, if you just leave the area empty, then of course someone else will come along. And if, if, if all else fails, um, what I've, something that I've sometimes done, although it's also uh, practice, not yet, I've uh, sometimes drawn a rectangle and tagged this as uh, note equals there is no building here or something, you know, just so that if people call up the area in their editor, they see, okay, there's something there, right? I wanted to maybe uh, challenge you to look forward to a part two of this talk next year, which could focus, but, I mean, these are all very good examples of problems that could happen. Um, and you did, I think, present some guidance on what, um, how, maybe not a mechanical edit, but a workflow and a designed process which incorporates some analysis at a large scale along with human check local knowledge. Um, it would, as well as imports, it would be, I think, helpful for people who are looking at doing this kind of work to see also examples of where it did work well and what are the detailed like design principles of those processes that can help make it work. Um, I think we have a lot of examples of what not to do, um, but more examples of what to do um, and what to follow as good practice would be um, helpful for people who want to do that, who, who think that there may be something to do here. Yeah, with, with any luck next year, I, I might even have uh, uh, an example where I could say, hey, these people did it really well. Uh, off the top of my head, I, I, I wouldn't be able to name any mechanical edit that, that was really good. Um, but yeah, um, of course, uh, as, as we grow larger, uh, especially there are situations where, for example, someone maps a lot of data and has, later finds out that they had a systematic mistake in, in how they were doing something. For example, they were working from offset aerial imagery and now they want to basically, they say, okay, I've, I've been working for five weeks on tracing all this stuff and now I find out that my, my imagery was offset and I want to basically move everything 20 meters north or something. Uh, there are use cases like that where obviously uh, it's okay for this one person to just change the stuff that they've contributed. Um, it's, not, it's not like uh, you need a second pair of eyes to, to fix things or so. So, yeah, there certainly are valid, valid cases. Okay. Thank you. Good night.